Hey, it's Bruce Feldman. Pleased to be joined this week by Arizona State's interim head coach, Sean Aguano. Coach, thanks for joining us today. I appreciate you guys having me on. Thank you. So you guys are coming off a terrific win against Washington. And it was the first uh, it was the first win over an FBS opponent for the Sun Devils. I know that your team has been through a lot. The players have been through a lot of a roller coaster ride. What did it feel like for you to be in the locker room with them to see them kind of celebrating in that moment? It, it was an ex incredible experience. You know, those the past three weeks have been tough. Um, you know, they've grieved a lot. Uh, and then the cultural change uh, from a uh, coaching perspective, they had to go through and, and trust me to make, uh, make sure that uh, they were taken care of and, and everybody buying in. That was tough for kids nowadays. And, and uh, But that affirmation with a win um, proved to them that uh, they're a good football team and they can compete uh, in the Pac-12. For people who may not know your story, um, you were a extremely successful high school coach in the state of Arizona and won a bunch of championships and had a bunch of first round picks. Uh, what do you think your skill set maybe serves you best for leading them at this time? You know, um, the understanding of kids in, in this era, um, what uh, they need from an inspirational standpoint. Um, I'm a listener. I, I listen to their needs. Um, I'm incredible in, in regards to uh, paying attention to detail and, and the deliberacy that they need. Um, and so all of those attributes, I think, um, setting up a structure that I think that they could, they'll be successful in, that, that uh, I think they need it at this time, and, and they've bought in. And so those characteristics, I think, bringing from that high school uh, range helped me um, succeed so far. As Successful as you were in high school, and it's not that far from, you know, proximity wise from where you're coaching now. I mean, are you at all nostalgic looking back to what you were doing back then, as opposed to now all of a sudden you're a Pac-12 head coach and you're, you know, you're going up against these huge branded programs. I mean, you grew up on the West Coast. It must be, it must be kind of at some point a little bit surreal and kind of wild to, to think where you're, where you are right now. You know, it is, it is surreal. Um, my wife calls me a dreamer and I've always um, seen myself in, in this position and played through it over the years, driving in my car, um, experiencing what are the pitfalls that you'll go through? What are the circumstances you would go through? What, are, what is the situations that you go through? And I've always played it through my mind and watched um, head coaches go about it. But uh, I think, you know, inspiring these kids and making sure that, they're ready to play for you um, was a huge attribute for me. And, and uh, I don't see any of these big schools as being bigger than um, the Arizona state. And so we go about our business uh, believing in that. We've seen not only a big wave of jobs come open earlier and earlier, certainly obviously Arizona state, one of them, but we've also seen some interim head coaches really hit the ground running, make a big impact. Brent Key has won his first two games at Georgia Tech. Mickey Joseph, another guy at, at his alma mater, has now won back-to-back -back games at Nebraska. In your case, this was a big win. This was a really good team you guys just beat the other day. Any reason why you think interim head coaches are having maybe more success than, than a lot of people would have expected? Does it have something to do with just, um, it, you think it's anything related to being flexible with portal rosters or different things or or maybe just connectivity why do you think some of these other coaches like yourself have been able to have such an impact so quickly i think because as an assistant coach you sit back and and you analyze everything that's going on with the team um and you become a secondary uh advisor to these kids and when the interim coaches um have the opportunity now i think they're easily uh, some of the um troubles that are in the in the program are easily fixed the other thing is that the kids believe in you because you've been with them through the recruiting process, um, have those relationships with those kids. And so now they know that you're there for them. I think it's easier for the kids from a transition standpoint. I know from being around Mickey Joseph, I know he leaned on, you know, kind of what he saw Ed Ogeron do at LSU and certainly at USC. So it was kind of an example and he, you know, he would put his own spin on it for you as you were sitting back, like how often would you, you, think about no I'm not going to I would do it differently or however but to to be actually like, like so you'd be so ready I mean when did you start thinking about you know what 
I may get my opportunity and it may be maybe more than two games. It may be half a season or maybe it'll be, I know you were a candidate at Hawaii um, last year when there was, there was talk of that job, when that job had come open. I mean, is this something that has always been on the, not always on the front of your mind, but like just kind of in the back of your mind or how you would handle it? I've always approached uh, every job for, with a head coach mentality um, and I always sit back and learn. I, I, I'm a, I'm an incredible life learner. Um, and having the opportunity, you know, to work with Marvin Lewis over the last uh, four years, to uh, hear Coach Brian Billick um, in our meetings, um, to watch Coach Edwards. And so there's some great things that I pulled from them. And then putting my spin on and my personality, things that I've learned from the past and watching other coaches around the country because uh, our school is very uh, highly recruited. And so I've seen a lot of the, the recruiting um, deals that that went from the from the, the other side of the table with the with a, a bunch of these coaches and so I just sit back and I take notes I you know I have a notebook by my side uh, side of my bed every night and I before I go to bed I take all the notes that I can that's that's flying through my brain and uh, and make sure that I, I address it the, the the next day but I I'm a lifelong learner and I I'm a great listener. And, you know, I learned from uh, some people's mistakes, but mostly I learned from the good things that uh, people have done. What's the best advice you think you've ever gotten as a coach? To be yourself. Um, try not to be anybody else. Be yourself. Um, demand what you demand, but then make sure that you love these kids up and they understand that. And then they will fight for you. How challenging is it to, to stay in the moment, yet at the same time, I'm sure you'd love to be the guy who ends up keeping the job after the season. How, how demanding or challenging is it to have that inside of you and yet at the same time know that is it just to stay in the moment and stay, you know, you can't play Stanford yet. You know, there's another, it's a bye week. So how do you, how do you balance that? I'm enjoying every day. Um, and I talk to our kids about stacking days, stacking practices, stacking games. I'm stacking days so that I can be the best for our kids and so when you talk about living in the moment, I live every single day to the, to its fullest. Uh, and I enjoy waking up at 4 or 15 in the morning and, and starting the day because to me, this is a hobby. Um, it's not a job because I get to work with in, incredible young men and incredible coaching staff. And my wife and kids are extremely supportive. And so I'm living every day like it's, 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 it's a fantasy for me. If I told the kid who was the smallest college uh, college football player up in Oregon that someday he was going to be running a Pac-12 football program, what would that young player have, have said? That I think you're absolutely crazy. But uh, um, I played for incredible coaches at a very um, successful school uh, at Linfield University um, and learned tremendously. And a lot of those characteristics I've brought with me through my coaching career uh, coach Ad Rutschman was my coach at that time, but uh, Ed Langsdorf and Jay Losey, all of those guys have uh, had a huge impact on my coaching career and, and my philosophy and how I go about things of taking care of people, making sure that everybody feels appreciated, and then making sure that there's nobody, no bigger thing than your program and your kids and making sure that I take care of my kids more than anything else. How will you define success for the Arizona Sun Devils going forward this season? I think from a successful standpoint is that our kids, our seniors that will leave the program has had the best experience over those nine games that we've had. Um, and I understand all the heartache that, that played in within the first three games, but they turn around and this has been a successful season. I see a smile on their face. They walk off the field playing to the last whistle um, and then and then enjoying what they do. That is success to me. And, and if that means we will stack wins till the end of the season, um, will that be successful? Absolutely. Them playing hard every down, is that successful? Absolutely. But them having a great experience. And, and I told our coaches, let's just go out and have fun no matter what happens and coach uh, until you can't coach again. The same thing I ask in with these kids. Um, and, and how hard they're working on the field, but uh, I'm, I'm enjoying every moment of it. Is there been a time where you've sat back and thought about, okay, these are like, you, you almost have a challenge probably with your energy. I feel like of almost like trying to do too much. I can only imagine how hard it is probably for you to either get to sleep or even stay asleep just because you want to just attack the next day. I mean, how do you, how do you kind of manage all the emotion that, that is swirling on that side of it beyond just the football piece? 
piece of it? You know, um, I, I manage it pretty well. I, I'm a guy that uh, get, gets about five hours of sleep and then I'm up and running and, and you know, I, I'm pretty positive guy. Um, but I do have uh, the state of Arizona, yeah, the, the high school coaches, um, all of those guys on my back that I want to make sure that they're proud and they're smiling. Uh, Arizona State alumni, making sure this 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 season is a success. And so um, that weighs on you a little bit. So that makes me fight even harder. Coach, we appreciate your time today. Obviously, uh, you guys have a bye week. I know you're still working. And then before you go on the road, Stanford at Colorado, um it's it's been fun to watch watch this program i, I don't want to say come back to life but just see the energy that that those those kids in that team are, are playing with it's obviously very reflective of what you guys have done there i appreciate it thank you bruce all right thank you